boxcar, fully loaded and rolling at top speed. They're hauling the weapons of war from the arsenal of democracy to the fighting men on all our fronts. The material inside those cars, guns, food, crates, bales, and boxes, is getting a rough ride. They're pounded and bounced as the wheels hit track joints and rough spots in the roadbed. They're violently shaken by the impact of switching cars. Yes, boxcar loads take a lot of punishment. The damage resulting from a rough ride can easily be prevented. That's up to you. That's your job. The whole purpose of loading a boxcar right is to get those supplies up where they're needed in the same condition in which they were sent. At this Army depot, freight of all sizes and descriptions is stored for every branch of the Army. Boxes of rations, bags of sugar, Barrels of other foodstuffs from the Quartermaster Corps may go into the same car with the engineer's steel cable bridge material or Signal Corps radio equipment. Drums of chemicals and gas masks from the chemical warfare branch might be shipped on the same train as supplies from Ordnance or Armored Command. Let's start at the beginning to load a boxcar. First, it has to be thoroughly cleaned. This car may have carried acids, oil, or explosives. If you didn't clean the box car, a carload of sugar, flour, or coffee might be ruined. Play safe. Always clean it out. Nails that rip cargo to shreds must be tracked down. This handy gadget is called a nail finder. If you find any nails, take them out. drive a necessary nail back in where it won't do any harm to the cargo. Doors are the weakest part of the boxcar. If a shipment breaks loose during the trip and bounces around, the doors are in for a beating. But if they're always protected by barricades, they'll ride out the roughest trip. Here in another car, the actual job of loading has started. Drums and barrels are the tough guys of boxcar loading. If they roll, they'll smash everything in sight, including themselves. Always load out from the ends of the car toward the center. These two bars nailed on the end wall keep the weakest part of the barrel, the bilge or middle, from pressing against the wall and hold the barrel at its strongest points, about six inches from the top and six inches from the bottom. Cross bracing will keep each unit, usually about four or five rows, from bouncing around. Each unit must be cross braced so that it is firmly locked in. Notice how tightly the barrels are nested into place. Now the load is going to be double decked. First, a flooring has to be built on top of the lower unit. This gives the top rows of barrels a solid footing and keeps them from smashing in those below. The floor is nailed to cross beams, and the cross beams are nailed to the side walls. That holds the floor in place. Completed, it'll be held tight by the two braces at the end, in the same manner as below. And that takes care of loading barrels or drums. Nested tightly, firmly braced, they'll stand up under the roughest kind of treatment. Here's a shipment of rations but it could be anything. As long as the material is in a box or crate, it gets the same handling. The boxes are placed lengthwise in the car. In this way, they take the shock of any contact on their ends and not on their sides. Make those boxes fit tight so there's no slack anywhere. A tight cargo is a must for good loading. Sometimes a box placed sideways will wedge the load in better. If rearranging doesn't work, 
you may have to place a bulkhead in that vacant space. Bulkheads are assembled as completely as possible before they are actually set up in the boxcar. The load's got to be tight, snug, and secure. Cargo is usually divided into small units, with each unit braced separately. Otherwise, there'd be too much play, and at the first switching point, the cargo would slam itself to pieces. Only one side of this bulkhead is faced. This is done because the posts have to be nailed against the side of the wall. When that's done, the other side of the ball is play and lined with car. Loaded and break. Many kinds of supplies come in sacks and they must be handled carefully because they damage easily. Sacks of flour, sugar, coffee, and beans have to be protected from dirt and oil. To do that, the inside of the car must be thoroughly lined with paper. Note that the walls as well as the floor are covered. Here's one way of getting a good tight load. Sacks will be built on top of each other, the same way a bricklayer lays bricks. The lengthwise sack is at the right-hand side of the first layer. It is on the left-hand side of the second layer. and on the right-hand side of the third layer, and so on until the car is loaded. Loaded this way, you can see that the weight of the sacks holds them together. But remember, sacks must always be clear of the side walls to keep them from being damaged. For this type of loading, you've got to arrange a special bulkhead. It has to clear the doors and door posts so that's a little narrower than the loads on both sides. That's the completed job. The brick wall load and the brick wall bulkhead. It makes a tight load and holds itself together by its own weight. This is sometimes called the header and stretcher method of loading. Here in another car, the key sack method of loading is being used. It also gives you a very tight load. Both header and stretcher and key sack methods are acceptable. The key sack is laid lengthwise clear of the sidewall. On it, two sacks are placed crosswise. The inner ends of these sacks must touch the floor. At the bar, the same operation takes place. The key sack and the two cross sacks. Now the center is filled with sacks laid lengthwise. This is continued until the load is built from both ends of the car to the doorway.
The doorway bulkhead is just a narrow version of the key sack loading method. The key sacks are laid down on both sides of the door and two sacks are placed crosswise on each key sack. In the middle section, instead These planes keep knocking off the enemy, thanks to the spare parts you packed and stacked in rolling warehouses. On land and in the air, soldiers in all branches of our army, all over the world, are fighting with the material and equipment you send them. 